I'd like to welcome everybody to Lacey Creek uh, today. Uh, Dr. Brenda Cole says it's a good looking crowd. I say there's quite a few of them. Um, we'll leave it at that. I want to go this morning to something that uh, I probably struggle with as much as anything that's in my Bible. And there's a joke that goes back there around that corner about how Papa Conley used to preach you know, with his fingers pointing back at him and one pointing out. And you'll often see several back there pointing with all their fingers, but they don't want to preach to themselves. Today, I firmly had my fingers pointed at me, and it's okay if you all point them at me as well. In Matthew chapter 5, and I had two different scriptures, two different spots written down today to go. Didn't know where we were going to go. Y'all got up here. It says, You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto ye, that you resist not evil, that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it has been said that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? But ye therefore be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. All week I've heard from my 12 year old daughter how life is not fair. And it may not seem fair to us sometimes. But God has a greater plan for us. God has more hope for us. And God knows better than us. And I was talking to Christy this week. And I said, you know. There's a lot of people in this world that I may not particularly care for, but I need to love those people. And I said, those people deserve the same as me to go to heaven. There may be people in this house today that have used me, that have despised me. And there may be people in this house that I've used or I've despised. But I can't help that. I'm sorry for that. But you deserve to be in heaven the same as I do. None of us deserve it. But we're all human. We all make mistakes. We all do things that we shouldn't do. And at some point in time, we all use somebody. And we all deserve their forgiveness. But most of all, we all can receive God's love. And that's not just for the just. That's not just for the righteous. That's for everybody. Amen. And who am I to doubt what Jesus himself said, what God gave him? <coughs> That's not my place. I can't doubt what Jesus said. I can't doubt what God sent to him. I have to have the faith that Jesus knows best. And that he absolutely wants the best for me, as I should want the best for my brother. That I should want the best for people that despise me, for people that use me. At this time, Brother Dan, bring the message. Thank you, Brother Eric. I want to thank the Lord for, for this another opportunity to be able to share God's word with, with my friends and family, my loved ones. Um, I'm going to be in Hebrews chapter 12 today, if you want to go ahead and turn there. I want to look at faith today. 
we uh, come out of Hebrews chapter 11, where it speaks of the faith of Noah. His faith was great that he, he built that ark when God told him to. Abraham, when he was told out to go into another land, obeyed. Uh, Sarah also believed that, that the child would come to her in old age. Throughout chapter 11, we have, we have uh, Abraham offering his son Isaac because of his great faith. Uh, the faith of Jacob, the faith of, of Joseph, goes on and on. The faith, of, the faith of Moses' mother and also Moses' faith. We read of uh, the faith where Moses raised the, the staff and the waters parted. The faith of uh, uh, Joshua as he went around the city seven times, or seven days, 13 times total, I guess. He went around the city of Jericho and the walls fell. Because that's what God said to do. We see the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and, and many of the prophets in the Old Testament. And we see this great faith and all these people that were so faithful to the Lord. And then we come to chapter 12, and it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We have a race to run. This is showing how they, they ran the races back, back in Greece many years ago. They would run these races. And there were judges watching them. There were people looking down on them and making sure that they were playing by the rules. Today we're told we have a great, a great cloud of witnesses or examples that we just read about in chapter 11 of Hebrews. These many examples that we have are our witnesses. And it says, lay aside every weight. They laid aside the weights that, that bothered them, and they, they got them off, the same as racers would do. They would, they would not carry anything real heavy. They would be as light as they could. They wouldn't wear things that were wind-resistant. <coughs> they want to be able to run as fast and as long as they can. As Christians, we need to continue to do that ourselves. It says... And the sin which doth so easily beset us. We're coming out of a chapter on faith. We have great faith <laughs> in the Lord. But sometimes our faith is a little, a little lacking. We have to say, Lord, increase our faith. Lord, help us. I don't understand why my faith is not what I feel like it ought to be. And sometimes we need to get into the Word and submit ourselves to God and resist the devil and really really push hard so that that faith will, will take shape again. So that, that unbelief, I believe, is the sin that doth so easily beset us. And then it says, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. This is a marathon, folks. We don't just give our life to Christ and see where everything's good and, and, and everything is great in the world from that point on. Because it's not. Let me tell you. The rain falls on the just and on the unjust. And we need to continue to follow the Lord no matter what it takes. We need to stand up for the Lord and continue to be there for Him as He was for us on that cross at Calvary. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We're told that though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all those that obey him. He's the author of eternal salvation, which means he did it. He's lived it. He gave his life on the cross for us. He died for us. He is our most magnificent example that there is. And we need to follow him. He is also the finisher because he finished it. He laid down his life. No man took his life from him. He laid it down for us. 
says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He did it because the joy that was to come for him. He knew that he could be the savior of the world if he did the things that the father told him he needed to do. So he was obedient to the death of the cross. And that joy. You know, Jesus was in heaven in the beginning. And he was sent down to earth in a human form to become man. To live as man, to see our weaknesses, to see our problems that we go through, the temptations that we had. And he was able to endure without any of that. But he came down to this earth. He knew how much, how great joy there would be in heaven because he had been there before. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. <clears throat> For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. A lot of people came up against Jesus. He would say something. He'd tell somebody their, for, their sins were forgiven them, and somebody would say, wait a minute, you can't do that. That's blasphemy. Every time he, he came around another corner, somebody was there saying you can't do that or you're wrong or you don't know what you're talking about. The people that did not believe were always looking over his shoulder, were always giving him a hard time and, and coming after him for work, first one thing then another. But he endured. In uh, John 16, verse 33, it says, Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world... Ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus overcame the world. And he's our example. And we need to be able to do thing, the same thing. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, down verse 3. For consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against himself, Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. We need to stand up against the persecution that comes our way. Ye have not yet res resisted unto blood, striving against sin. How much difficult times do we have in this life? No matter how difficult we might think it is, none of us have ever gone to the cross. Not a one of us. And it's not something the Lord asks us to do for. Jesus Christ went to the cross for us. He suffered more than we will in this life. You know, we look at some things that happen to us from time to time and think, Lord, how can I continue? And that's when we have to have that great faith. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Proverbs chapter 3. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. You know, when we do wrong, God's going to let us know. If we continue to follow his word, if we continue to study his word, then we know we've done wrong. And he'll let us know. If ye endure chastening. If ye endure chastening. God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. We need to stand up and realize when we've done wrong. We need to ask the Lord for forgiveness. That's part of it. We, we, need, to, we need to continue to follow the Lord. But there's going to be chastisement. There's going to be things coming our way that, that we won't understand. This, this verse right here, I, I, I remember back, Meg had told us one time, I don't know, it was Bible, Bible study or, or, or whatever. It's been, been a few years ago. She was in college at the time. And uh, she told about a time when she was with her, her uh, roommates at college. And they were sitting around and they were talking. And they were talking about, you know, my parents make me be in by such and such a time. And somebody else said, well, my parents make me do this. And my parents won't let me do that. On and on and on. 
And they noticed the one girl that was sitting there hadn't had been real quiet. And they asked her, what was the matter? And she said, your parents loved you. She said, I, my parents didn't do that. They didn't care where I was. They didn't care what time I came in at night. It didn't bother them that I wasn't home. Your parents loved you. That's why they did the things they did. That's why people get punished. You know, nowadays we, we try to be parents and, and I don't know, people have gotten to the point where they think love for your child is letting them do whatever they want to do and giving them everything they want. That's not love. That's just turning them loose. Sometimes it takes tough love. And that's what God does for us. He gives us that kind of tough love. We need to do that for our children, and it, it, it hurts when we do. And it hurts the Father when He has to discipline us. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? When you punish your child, they cry. They throw a fit. They get upset. And you follow through. And you'll see, this, this is what children are all about. After you said, okay, your punishment's up, your timeout's over, whatever it is. They come up and they give you a hug. You don't have to ask for it. More often than not, they'll just give you a hug. And they've forgotten all about everything that happened. Verse 10 says, For they verily for a few days chasten us over their pleasures, or, or uh, verily, let's see, for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. Now, this doesn't mean that, that parents are happy to discipline their kids. It means really their best judgment. And that's all we can do as parents is use our very best judgment when we discipline our kids. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. God does it for our profit. God does it so that we will learn from it. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. You know, when the Lord's chastising us, or as a child when our parents chastised us, it wasn't a happy time, was it? It was difficult. It was rough. It was something we didn't want to have to go through. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Those that are exercised thereby, those that take heed, those that pay attention to why they were being chastised, when we do that, it makes it all right with the Lord, and we grow by it. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Don't despair. Don't be in despair all the time. Lift up your head. Make straight paths for your feet. We're speaking of paths of, of righteousness. Not our own paths, not something that we might decide that we want to do for ourselves, but the paths of righteousness. What the Lord said, as Brother Eric was saying, we've got to follow the Lord's will. It's not our will. It's God's will we need to follow. And make straight paths of your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. We need to be an example for others. Follow peace with all men. We're told if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Everybody. We love people. We love our enemies. We love people that despise us. We need to continue to do that. Follow peace with all men and holiness or righteousness, doing what's right, without which no man shall see God. Looking diligently, or being careful how we conduct ourselves, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, 
Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you or hatred. Don't let those things trouble you. And thereby many be defiled. When you have that kind of attitude or when you rather than, than loving your neighbor, that hatred rises up. And it causes many to be defiled. As it just said, we, we're examples. And we need to be examples to those that aren't strong in faith. Lest there be any fornicator or profane ver, uh, person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. He sold his birthright for one morsel of meat. And he was sorry he'd done it, but he couldn't get it back. You know, if we look toward the things of this world, and we're more interested in the things of this world than eternity, it's the same thing that he did. He gave up something that was temporary for something that was very sacred. If you're a Christian today, you have a birthright with the Lord. Let's not turn away and do things contrary to God's word. Because we see things that are temporary that we think we like and things that we, we want to spend our time doing or, or having. We can't get into those things. We need to continue to follow the Lord. For ye know how that afterward, when, ye would have in, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance. After he had given up his birthright, Jacob didn't want to give it back. He couldn't receive his birthright now. If we give up our birthright, if we give up our right to be in heaven after this life is over, there's no way we're going to get it back. We need to be faithful unto death to receive that crown of life. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For you are not common to the mountain, or to the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest, and the sound of the trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they that heard in, entreated that the words should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with the dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. We have not touched that mountain. We were not out Mount Sinai. We were not under the law that was given on Mount Sinai. That's not something we ever had to endure. It goes on and says, but ye are come to Mount Zion. Christians, we've come to Mount Zion and we set up in, in Jerusalem. We have come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable company of angels. Christianity began on the, on the day of Pentecost. And today, that's what we have if we will accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We're not under the law as they were <laughs> at that time. To the General Assembly, the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Again, you know, back in 18 it says, For ye are not come into the mountain, the mountain of, of Sinai. Verse 22, But ye are come unto Mount Zion. And we've also come unto, it continues in these verses, and we've come to Jesus, the mediator of our new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Seeing that ye refuse not him that speaketh, don't refuse Jesus Christ. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, that being Moses, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. God. We need to follow God. In Old Testament times, they were to follow the law of Moses and do the things that Moses said. Today, we need to follow the Lord. And that's what it was saying back in, in 18 and 19. It's talking about how, how the earth 
shook at that time. Uh, verse 26, whose voice then shook the earth. This is a God from heaven. But now he had, and this, this is speaking back to, to on Mount Sinai, when God's voice was heard and it shook the earth. That was the time when they went from the patriarchal age to being under the law, or the law of Moses, and following the law of Moses when the earth shook. Whose voice then the, shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And he's speaking here of a time. Uh, let me read some of this real quick. Hag, uh, Haggai 2, uh, verse 5, says, According to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. He's talking about on the day of Pentecost. It would shake again, and even the heavens would shake. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more shake I not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifying the removing of those things that are shaken. We're no longer under the law. We're under, we're under grace and love of God. But we still have a God that knows wrath. And we need to obey him. We need to do the things that he would say. As of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom. On the day of Pentecost, we received a kingdom. We read in, in Daniel 2 that, that it's a kingdom that will last forever. It's a kingdom that cannot be shaken which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. We need to live our lives for the Lord. We need to do what the Lord says. We need to be strong in the faith. Yeah, there's times when we have weak faith. Uh, Peter. Peter walked on the water. But he took his eyes off the gold. He quit looking at Jesus and he started seeing the waves and the wind. The wind was making the waves and it was looking at worldly things. And he began to sing. And Jesus said, you had little faith. Wherefore, we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. There's going to be a time of, of wrath. There's going to be a time, we look at Old Testament times and we see, you know, like Nadab and Abihu, they, they used strange fire when they, when they made sacrifices and they were consumed by that fire. It was instant. Today, because of the grace of God, we do things we shouldn't and we're given the opportunity to ask for forgiveness. But there's going to come a time. There's going to come a time when that consuming fire will still be there. When the Lord returns. In uh, 2 Peter 3.10 it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. If you're not a Christian today, give your life to the Lord. Don't, don't wait until it's everlasting too late. If you are a Christian, continue faithfully in the Lord. It's, it's not an easy road. It's a rough road. We all have difficulties. We all have problems. But it's the best that we could ever have. There's none better than living for the Lord. You know, I, I look at people that aren't Christians and I, I try to remember what it was like when, when you lose loved ones and you didn't have the Lord in your life. We need to continue to, to follow the Lord. We need to continue to do what, what He would have us to do and continue to love Him. 
you're not a Christian today, if you've heard the word, and you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and you need to repent. And if you've repented, which is simply making a commitment to the Lord that you want to you want to turn away from your old life of sin and, and turn toward Him and start living your life for Him. If you've done those things, we ask you to come forward during this closing song. We'll give you the opportunity to confess Jesus Christ before man and be baptized for remission of sins. This time, let us stand and sing number 189.